Hi everybody, so I do keep banging on about the community, but actually the community is awesome. And the great part of this video is just going to be an example of that because a lot of this work has been done by Trey Rousey, who's done some modelling in free flow so that you can replicate it if you want. See if it makes sense to you, it certainly makes sense to me because free flow is open source. Anyway, we're working on wind turbines. Now, wind turbines break down into four essential components. There's the bit that catches the wind and turns it into mechanical energy, and for us, that's this squirrel cage. The wind comes along, it gets caught, it turns the cage. And that's the first section of any wind turbine. That mechanical rotation is then converted into electrical energy by the generator section, and that's this bit here where we've got our wire and our coils. After that generation, we need to turn it into a form we can use it, which is a conversion section, and then more often than not, you store it, which is the storage section, and then you use it after that. So these four essential components to any wind turbine can be separated out, and we can look at them separately. Because what we've been focusing on is the wind capturing section and the generation section. Now the wind capturing section is really governed by its geometry. It's basically how big it is and how good it is at capturing wind because the more wind you can capture, the more energy you will get in any given, any given wind and of course the easiest way to do that is make it bigger. However, we introduced this idea here of the Darwin wind turbine which is a passive capture device. So because it's just a big sock in the air, the wind comes in here and more wind gets captured so that we can force that extra wind down onto our conversion section where we turn the wind into mechanical energy and we'll get more mechanical energy out of it because we're capturing more wind and of course that's the basic idea. Now there's a whole range of questions about something like that of course and the first one is does it work? Well, Trey did some modelling, as I say, and had a look at this. Now, I don't know if you remember, when we first did this, we had no baffle plates in. Without baffle plates, this is the kind of thing that happens. The wind does get forced down to a degree, but quite a lot of it actually gets sent out of the other side of the device. And you can see that on that diagram. Now, the red is fast, the blue is slow, and you can see that a fair bit is just sipping straight through the turbine, coming out the back side. So to speak, <laughs> an awful lot of wind coming out of his backside. <laughs> so, because we put the baffles in, and the minute you put those baffles in, this is what happens: the wind can no longer zip across, and actually gets diverted down to where we want it to. Now, of course, that's no real surprise, is it? And it's something that envelopes are working on. If you remember, the envelopes wind capture device has a um, hyperbolic cone at the top. So what Trey did was he modelled that hyperbolic cone to see what would happen with that. And as you can see, the hyperbolic cone has a very definite impact in directing the wind and the wind speed where we want it to go. Because we want it to go down and we want it to go through the squirrel cage. Now, we looked at that squirrel cage as being just this and we compared it to the water's turbine. Remember the water's turbine? The idea is that the air coming straight in gets diverted to the veins where it needs to go because there is again a hyperbolic cone splitting that. So Trey modelled that and this is the model he came up with for the hyperbolic cone on the base of the turbine and the baffle plates in place. And it's pretty obvious really that the kind of things we're thinking about, that is baffle plates in here, hyperbolic cone, will do the job that we want it to from um, the modelling that Trey has done. Now Trey is um, he's a modest guy actually and he's saying you know this is all very rough and ready Rob and I'm sure it is rough and ready but it certainly gives us an idea that we're on the right track. Now geometry is going to have a huge impact on these things and the model that we've made actually have the, the model I've drawn it uses an NACA uh, 8410 blade profile set at 5 degrees angle attack with the gurney flap set at 45 degrees to the main flap of the wing. That is going to give us a considerable wind uh, lift force and of course we don't really know what the height of these has got to be. This is certainly far too high but we've got some way to work on how high that needs to be in order to get an efficient free flow 
through that actual squirrel cage rather than just a squirrel cage from a fan we've done a little bit more design on that using NSEA wing profiles so there's quite a lot of geometry to be looking at but we certainly look like we're heading in the right direction with the ideas that we've got that is baffle plate squirrel cage and direction of the airflow to give us the kind of results that we're looking for i mean if you really did some in-depth analysis and i'm quite sure we could come up with some more ideas but we certainly know i would say from trey's work that we're heading in the right direction and it's obviously going to take me a little bit of time to do things because uh, things like the Waters turbine with the NACA 8410 wing profiles that I'm printing. They're going to take about, I think it's two days and 18 hours to print that turbine. And somebody said to me, How long? And I thought, Well, you don't set it going and stand there, you know. You set it going and leave it alone. You, you can go to the park with the kiddies, you, you can eat your dinner, you can walk the dog, you watch television, you do not have to stand glued to your printer. It takes a little time to print for sure, but your contact time is quite low. And so when these things are printed and put together, then I'll be doing videos on them, obviously, but there will be delays between those things. And of course, I get on with other things. But I wanted to share, you, uh, share with you Trey's work, because I thought it was awesome of him to do it. It's an example of what I mean about community support in each other, and it gives us an indication that we're heading in the right direction with this Darwin and Squirrel Cage combination that we're looking at. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.